G'day, my name is Michael with Core Electronics and today we're going to be looking at how to use the terminal with our Raspberry Pi. On the bench here I've got my Raspberry Pi 3 Model B with a mouse plugged in, a wireless keyboard, this is the video connection for our monitor and that's our power. Over on the desktop, this is what you'll see when you boot up a fresh install of uh, Debian or Raspbian Pixel. So this should be pretty similar to what you see when you first boot up. And we can find the terminal either by accessing this icon here, or we can access it through the, the applications menu, uh, accessories and terminal. So this is what you'll see when you first open the terminal. We have Pi, that's the current user. Raspberry Pi is the machine we're working on. The tilde is telling us the directory that we're in, and this dollar sign is the, um, is the shell's way of prompting us for our own input. So what we're looking at is the terminal window, and inside that we're looking at the shell. The shell, called bash, is what takes the user's inputs and processes them. So we're just going to start by printing the working directory with the command pwd. So we can see the current working directory is slash home slash pi. That first slash is the very top level directory. It's everything that exists on our Raspberry Pi sits underneath that directory. It's called root. From there, we have the home directory. That's where all the user directories live. If we had other users, they would be in there as well. Um, because we only have one user at the moment, pi, we're currently in the pi directory. So this tilde here is actually a shorthand for slash home slash pi. Let's, um, let's take a look at what's inside the pi directory. We can do this with the list command ls. And we can see that there are a few other directories like the desktop, downloads, pictures, etc. The When you get more and more files appearing with list, you'll, you'll see that they start to get color coded um, depending on what kind of file they are. So let's, for, for this tutorial, let's make uh, our own directory just to have a bit of a play around in. We do this with the make directory command, which is mkdir, and I'm gonna call it sandbox. And we can see that nothing, we didn't actually get any return. We didn't get any feedback. The shell assumes that we know exactly what we're doing. So it just does what we tell it without asking if we're sure or without giving very much feedback at all. For something as simple as make directory, you won't see any feedback. So we can perform ls again, and we can see that there it is, the directory sandbox has appeared. Before jumping into sandbox, we're just gonna make three more directories, but we're gonna put them inside sandbox. So we can just come down a bit and we can make directory, we'll call it test underscore one. Uh, excuse me, we're going to, I'm just gonna clear that. We're going to make directory and we're going to, to put it in sandbox and we're gonna call it test underscore one. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing again, make directory, but we're going to specify it from root. So we can make a directory in root, in home, pi, sandbox, test, two. Now these, these two commands are going to make uh, directories in sandbox. The first one was referenced to where we were, to where we were already, to our, to our working directory. Remember from the print working directory command. So it's saying wherever I am right now, there's already a folder or a directory called sandbox and inside that I want to make a directory called test1. The second command uses what's called an absolute reference. It's saying from root, I'm specifying the entire path all the way down to where I want to create test2 directory. This, this absolute way of specifying paths is this, this, this method means that no matter where you are in the file system, if you execute that command, it will put test2 in exactly that directory. Uh, again, let's make another directory. This time we're going to specify it from tilde, 
So we're going to say tilde sandbox test three. This is like another absolute reference, except we're referenced from the home directory pi. So let's just do a quick ls and jump into our sandbox. Ignore that test one, that was my first mistake. So we're going to use the change directory command, which is cd, and we're going to change into the sandbox directory. And you can see our prompt is updated to tell us of our new, new location. So if that tilde was the pi directory, we're now in pi sandbox. And we can ls from there and see that we have test one, two, and three directories. So now I suppose we'd better figure out how to make a text file. Text files are going to be your primary way of writing scripts and automating tasks for your Raspberry Pi to do. Um, they're gonna, it's, it's going to be definitely a cornerstone of interacting with your Pi. For that, we're going to use a program called Nano. So I can just, um, just by invoking the command Nano and typing Enter, you can see we've left the shell and we're now in a text editing environment. So let's write something simple like hello world. And we're going to save this file. Down the bottom, this is our, this is our menu essentially. And this caret symbol uh, stands for the control key. So we can see that the control X corresponds to exiting. So we're going to control X and we get a prompt. This is just saying, do you want to save your file before quitting? So we're gonna say yes, of course, with a Y, we're gonna save. And we're going to save it in. Uh, let's put it in the test one directory, because remember we're current. We we called Nano from Sandbox, so we can use a relative directory reference, which is test one, and let's just call it text file. And we're dropped back into the shell. So let's perform ls. Nothing's changed in Sandbox. If we change directory cd into test1 and perform ls again we can see that there's our text file we can invoke nano to have a look at it so we can say nano text file and there's our file again with with the same text that we entered before so we can just uh, control x to exit and because we made no changes to the file it just exits cleanly um, that didn't last very long. How about we delete the text file with the remove command? So that's going to be rm text file. And again, we get no feedback, but if we type ls, we can see nothing comes up. Text file has indeed been deleted. Um, this is just getting a little bit messy, so I'm going to use the clear command, and that's going to clear our console. You can do that whenever things get a little bit overwhelming or a little bit too hard to read. So we're still in uh, sandbox test one. We can jump back up to sandbox. We could, we could do that several ways. We could you know, change directory to um, using absolute references. So we could say uh, home pi and leave it at that. Or we could use a, another relative reference, which is the double dot. So what, that's going, what that means is it's just going to move up the directory file path one level. So because we're in test one and sandbox is the next level up, it's gonna move us into sandbox. And if we hit enter, we can see the prompt telling us that yes, we are indeed in sandbox with our three test folders. Now let's remove uh, directories, excuse me. Now let's remove these directories. We can try rm test one and we get a return from rm saying we can't remove test one, it's a directory. To remove directories and everything inside them, we need to invoke rm with the dash r argument. That r stands for recursive or a recursive remove. So we can rm r test one and ls, and we can see that test one has been removed as well. To delete the the other two test directories, we're going to we're going to do something a little bit a little bit more clever. If you had hundreds of these and you wanted to remove all of them, you wouldn't want to do it manually the whole way along. So we're going to use something called wildcards. We're going to use the same rm r command, and we're going to type in because these two directories have the word test in common. We can type in test, 
and follow it up with an asterisk, which is a wildcard. This asterisk is going to be a stand-in for any number of characters. So as long as the... This, this will delete all files and directories that start with the word test and have anything coming after them. So we can execute that, ls, and we can see that both those directories have been cleared. We can clear our console and we're um, cleaned up after ourselves and there's nothing in sandbox. So I encourage you to have a bit of a play in, in your sandbox directory. This could, be, um, this could be a good environment to just make some files, make some text files and see how you can move them around. Uh, perhaps explore copying, deleting, using those wildcards. Just make sure that you do everything within sandbox so you don't remove or delete anything very important.